next uh, DSEI Insights in Action. Actually, today we are in Dubai on uh, Global Freight Summit 2023, and I'm uh, very pleased to have with me today uh, Lance Lin, uh, the co-founder and CEO of Blue X Trade. So, welcome, Lance. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let's kickstart the conversation and let's take it towards what's always interesting is like what's cooking and what's new. And uh, we know that uh, Blue X Trade is interested in opening up, uh, let's say, an open source e bill of lading, trying to make it a global, uh, let's say, applicable tool. And we know a lot of people started it and tried. And can you tell us more about it and why you think this one will be different? Right, right. Um, I think, uh, you know, the trade documents are actually extremely important, obviously, and I think the bill lading is one of the most important ones. Um, it is obviously the key for title transfer uh, between parties, and that's why it's often called the documentation of value. And uh, I think uh, throughout the years, I mean, I think the supply chain community understands the value of digitizing it instead of going uh, going paperless, uh, going paperless. And so, um, the Fed. There are lots of benefits um, I can think of. That's uh, uh, the decreased amount of workflow required, right? The reduction of fraud and potentially just elimination of uh, potential frictions between trade. And I think there's one McKinsey research I, I remembered that an average of 16 hours has been spent uh, to facilitate uh, the bill lading. Uh, about $50 billion that are lost to fraud because of the documentations and a potential $55 billion that can be created to value for redu a reduction of friction. And so, and, th and that's not to mention that other potentials if we digitize the bill lading, such as the workflow surrounding it, right? The digital uh, cargo insurance, the digital custom brokerage that can be done on, on top of the EBL platform. So why has it not been done, right? That's actually the, the elephant in the room. And, I personally believe there's actually two reasons. One is the capability problem, and one is the neutrality problem. Uh, the capability as in not everybody within the community has the uh, financial resources or technological resources to facilitate this. Right? Not every single shipper or freight forwarder or even freight forwarding software has that capability. Right? And even if they use a SaaS or something to accomplish it, um, there's actually a very high cost involved. Uh, bill lading during COVID it's about $50 per transaction, right? That's extremely high, really. And then there's the second portion, the neutrality side. Uh, I, I believe that if a freight forwarder A has put all his data in a freight forwarder B, which created an EBL, I think there will be some uh, issues with that in terms of neutrality and data security. And so I think these are the two biggest bottlenecks. And I believe the only solution is to really have a neutral open source mm -hmm. Uh, a, a platform that is shared by everyone and really wide open. And I believe it should be uh, hosted and championed in a nonprofit organization. No different from USB uh, IF, the USB implementation forum. Right? And uh, what's a better organization to do it than DS, uh, DSCI? Um, after all, we have a lot of uh, community, uh, ample participants that are interested in making a change in the community. And it also has a sister institute, which is in cybersecurity. <laughs> Perfect. And so I think this, is, this will definitely make a change. And uh, hopefully through this DSCI uh, EBO initiative that we can you know, become the champions of the beginning of the entire digitization in the supply chain industry. Thank you very much, Lance. I think it's a very uh, inspirational goal, you know, joining forces is something which can uh, help accelerate global trade and especially give small and medium sized enterprises yes. a chance to uh, compete and, you know, go forward is always a, a great thing ahead right. of us. Right, right. So let's, uh, let's take the, the step forward and let's look, we are talking about digitization, yes. right? Part of digitization is always connected with AI, the power of AI. So, you know, what's, what's happening with AI and its application in supply chain? So how do you see the power of AI uh, building up on what Blue X Trade is working Sure, I, I think um, AI and in particularly generative AI is extremely important in the supply chain world. Um, our industry, the supply chain community, is known for its lack of standards, right? Not only for the documentation exchange, but also for the uh, 
data, uh, data standards within the documents, right? Most companies has a legacy systems. I know various carriers still use FTP and EDIs. And um, that's very human intensive uh, in terms of human intervention, labor intensive. And not to you know, mention that um, there's a lot of uh, uh, real time information cannot be communicated uh, within these different systems, right? And that's why so many people love Excel, as we talked about yesterday. And that's not really the tool for the future. And so I think uh, generative AI uh, has a capability to actually interpret a lot of data, right? It has two advantages. One, it comprehends the data from different sources very well, different documents very well. And second, it facilitates the translation in real time. So it allows the different legacy systems to communicate extremely quickly without a standard open uh, 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 documentation. Um, and so we can use this as a tool before uh, system standards are established, such as EBL, as we mentioned earlier. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, one thing that uh, Blue X is that we are heavily invested both in generative AI and traditional AI. And the reason is that Without the standards such as EBL right now, we have to use generative AIs to read the documents, uh, all the processing documents, the invoices, the bill ratings, uh, the packing lists, uh, using generative AI from different sources, different vendors, different carriers, and so forth. And that will be complemented by traditional AI to do fraud checks within existing systems. And by doing so, we can ensure that all our transactions, uh, all the KYC and KYBs, are secure, so our, uh, our capital uh, deployed will be the safest possible. So it's actually moving towards uh, greater transparency, yes. greater value for all the stakeholders within the uh, supply chain side, but as well providing the, the service you are building another level of uh, value for mm. all of those involved. Yes, for sure. So Lens, tell us a little bit more uh, about the collaboration and cooperation with the DSCI members. How Blue, Tra uh, Blue X Trade is actually, you know, living through it and through the community which DSCI has built. I think it's always interesting to learn uh, how the, the members are engaging together and on the other side, how they build value towards what their goals are. Because every single member has a different focus in that sense, but on the other side, combining goal together gives a a bigger puzzle. So we always ask these questions in a sense right, of right. sharing the experience. And actually, I'm actually really surprised. Uh, you know, this is one of the few organizations within the industry that is really open for change. Now, any crazy ideas as an entrepreneur I throw up when talking to a lot of the members yesterday and, and, and the earlier days, they're all very open. In fact, they are urging for this change. They are championing this change. And so I think when I mentioned the EBL initiative, uh, instead of the typical uh, resistance I get from different organizations or uh, partners within the industry, uh, and we are getting like, I can contribute to this, I can contribute to that. And that really, uh, really inspires me and, and, and I believe that you know, we are in the right place and that's why I want to, uh, um, DSCI is actually one of the places where I believe uh, that I can make an open contribution. And that's why BlueX is committed to providing this base codes, this basic hosting technologies for free to the community because I think we can all add towards that, uh, this, this over, uh, overall initiative to digitize the supply chain industry. So extremely excited. Thank you very much, Lance. And I think you, you really rounded up the conversation well. <laughs>